Okay, so in this video, I'm going to show you everything you need to know to get started with the Lightworks video editor in 2024. So when you first open Lightworks, you are presented with this window here. This is all your projects. You know, if you want to open a project, you just double click it and, you know, there's your project right there. This is just a clip I'm flipping around. To go back to that screen, you have this little button here, exit the current project and return to browser. Well, here you go. Here's your browser. You have some settings up here. You can click these. I absolutely never mess with these. I find that they're all just fine. But if you feel the urge to mess with the settings, they're up here. Otherwise, you just click create new project. You can give it a name. I'll call this test project and just click create. And you, when you first are in the editing program, you're going to be presented with this window here. And this is a tabbed editor. You know, you have a log tab. This is so you can import media. You can change the name of the file, stuff like that. I, I really never use this tab. Audio tab, you can edit the audio, of course. The assemble tab, this is for creating custom workspaces. You can move the windows around and add windows and such. I, I never use this tab either. Edit tab, you'll spend most of your time here. And then the VFX tab is for adding effects. So let's go to the edit tab and I'm going to import some clips. Now you can just click import clips, but I like to just click the clips, you know, find some clips in your computer's file browser, click and drag them in there. And pretty soon I'm going to have some clips pop up oh, right here. So assets, you know, sources, effects. So we're looking at assets right now. Double click it. I'm going to hit L, which is going to play the clip. I'm going to find a spot that I like. I'll hit the I key to set an input, an in point. Let it play. I'll hit O for out, and I'm going to hit K to stop it. And I'm just going to drag this clip right to the timeline. And that section I just marked off with the I and O keys is now in the timeline. And here it is. You can go back to your assets right here. I can double click this clip. It's actually the same clip it looks like. So let's go back to assets and double click this one. I'll hit play. I'll hit I for in. Let that play for a second. I'll hit O for out. And then I will click and drag this to the timeline here. And let's just go back to assets for a minute. In fact, let's add another asset. Let's just find a clip that looks different. How about this one? Drag it in there. I'm going to double click that. Hit I for in. You know, let it play for a second there. I'm messing with the camera settings, but I don't care. Hit O for out. And instead of dragging this in, I'm actually going to click this button. This is, this is, uh, well, actually, this is replace. So if I click this, it's going to delete this clip here. And it's going to put the clip right where the timeline is. See that? So the other clip has disappeared. Now this one took its place. I'm going to hit Control Z to undo that. You also have this button, which is insert. That's going to put, that's going to put this clip where the timeline is, but it's going to push these two clips over in order to make room for it. See? So now this clip is still here, and this one is in the middle. So you don't have to just drag and drop. You can click those two buttons to get them in the timeline as well. I can zoom in on the timeline by clicking the little plus button here. So let's do that. All right, let's zoom out a bit. That was too much. All right, so we have our three clips in the timeline here. Now, to edit these clips, this is where Lightworks really shines, in my opinion. It takes some getting used to, but it's better than most other editing programs. Let's say with this clip here, I want to increase the length of it, but I don't want to affect this clip. Well, I can take the cursor and I can place it near where the clip's transition. Deselect everything. There we go. And if I go to the left of it and click, this is whatever I do is going to affect this clip now and it's not going to affect anything else. So I can hit the left arrow key and I can make this clip shorter. You see how it's getting shorter? I can click the J key and make it get shorter. Click K to stop. I can click L and it's now getting longer. I can click L two times and make it get longer twice as fast. Three times will get longer three times as fast. Click J a couple times to make it get shorter quickly. And when I'm done with this, you hit tab and you get out. And now you have 
whatever changes you made to the clip right here. Conversely, I can affect this clip without touching this clip by positioning the cursor slightly to the right of where the two clips meet. And I'll click. And now anything I do will affect this clip here. I'm going to hit the right arrow key. This clip is getting shorter now. I'll click the left arrow key. Now it's getting longer. I'll hit L. Clip's getting shorter. Hit J. It's getting longer. You know, K stops it. And then tab to get out of it. And there's my edit. I could edit the audio only and not affect the video at all. In fact, if I want to do that, I can click this right here where it says video one. That's going to disable this track. You can now do the same thing you just did with the video, but do it with the audio. You see, this is now getting shorter and hit tab to get out. You know, I can highlight these two audio clips and hit delete. I can grab this one and just drag it over all of them. So that way I have one big audio clip for everything. I'll re-enable the video track. And, and now it's just the same audio clip for all three you know, video clips or video tracks. If I hit the C key, that's going to split the clips. Now these are two separate clips right here. I'll hit Control Z to undo that. There we go. I could disable the audio and hit C and now I just clip the video clips alone I can disable the video clips and you know hit C a couple times and now I just you know got rid of the audio there now you can right click and you can you know add a track if you want I could add a video track I could take this and put it up here if I wanted to you can add as many audio tracks as you want you know I could delete that I could right click and hit close gap and that's going to bring the audio back to here I can I can hit close close gap again of course you can't be selected on anything close gap yep and that just deleted everything it looked like so let's not do that but let's see this gap here hit delete that brings all this back here so you know let's take this put it up here I'll hit close gap you know no more gap so this this is mostly what you need to know in the timeline I mean, you also have slow and fast motion you know so with slow motion for instance if you select the clip and right click for whatever reason you can't do slow motion here I don't, I don't know why but it won't let you so deselect it right click and now you have speed right here and I can now just you know I could type uh, 10 I guess and just hit enter and this is going to ask you do you want to resize the clips so or make this clip bigger or do you want to keep it the same size and just change it uh just the starting frame or the ending frame i'll just make the clip bigger and now this clip is now 10 percent speed see it's moving very slowly very very slowly let's bring it back to normal I'll right click hit speed i'll put uh 100 so let's add a zero there and hit enter resize now it's back to normal so that's really mostly what you need to know at the timeline there you know um, you know, that's about it for the timeline. Well, one more thing. Let's say you want to add some transitions. Like right here, we want to add a transition between these two clips. You know, you have a little transition uh, tab right here. Click this. You got a bunch of transitions. I, I always just use dissolve. I'm just going to grab it and drag it down here. Now I have a dissolve. I can increase the length of it by clicking the transition. It's clicking out right here. Just like that. Now you have a long dissolve. You can right click it and you know replace it with something else like a push or something like that you got settings here amount you know you can I don't know I guess never never dissolve quite as much so it's not it's not gonna do a hundred percent dissolve I guess click that and delete it and now it's gone you know I could put the cursor here I can right click and you have transitions you can add a transition this way as well I'll put a squeeze in you know, a little squeeze play, whatever that is. Yep. Hit tab. Sorry. And I just hit the wrong key. Okay, here we go. Getting excited. Okay, so we just squeezed it out there. There you go. Look at that. 
So now let's go to the VFX tab. This is how you do effects, as you can guess. You know, you can adjust the size of these windows. So you clips down here. You can you can click this and drag it up. You can have bigger, you know, clips down here and a small window up here. But that's kind of silly. So let's just make that smaller here. Let's say I want to change the color of this clip. I love changing colors. You can see you have effects. You have transitions. Another place I can add transitions, by the way. Let's go to effects. Let's go to color. Color correction, you can click this and just drag and drop it down onto this clip here. Now, with any effect, if it has these little hourglass things here, if you click on them to highlight them, what you're doing is enabling keyframing now. So I could increase the saturation here. I could increase the contrast, play the clip a little bit. Then I could decrease the saturation and the contrast. And now you're going to see the change. High saturation, now it decreases. You see that? You can click the keyframes tab here. And I could edit these keyframes. I could add keyframes. I believe you can delete them here too. Yeah, delete, uh, deselect all, or select all, you know, reset them. Should be able to delete them here. You click the click the keyframe, hit delete. Now it's gone. Yeah, it took me a second to figure that out. But you know this this clip's gonna be really wacky now because I'm just like really messing with these keyframes. See that? You just add a keyframe wherever you want. You, know, you don't you don't like that keyframe? Again, you click it and you can hit the delete key here. You can step between keyframes by clicking these little arrows. It's gonna step between them. And you'll notice you can add a keyframe for whatever. Uh, portion of the effect you want a keyframe. I can do the saturation, the gamma, the contrast, whatever I want. And now when I play this clip, it's just going to be really wacky. Look at that. Goofy, wacky clip. Go to FX settings. You can toggle the effect off to see what it normally looks like. Put it back on. The little three dots here, you click these, you can remove the effect or in this case, reset it. I'm just going to reset everything. Now, down here you have video tools. It's like it, the video tools are very hard to find. I don't like where they are, but they're down here. You click the little flippy triangle and now you have your scopes. So I could increase the brightness to bring it up to 100 IRE, for instance. You got the highlights. Bring this up. You'll notice I do not have keyframing on. I really don't want keyframing on for this. So anyway, the brightness is now up to 100. Let's bring it up a little bit more. All right, that's up to 100. Let's bring the blacks down to zero. So you got your shadows here. Let's bring the slider so that way these are touching zero. This is going to give it better contrast. And your midtones are all around 75 or so, which is good. So now I like to increase the saturation, but first let's look at the vetroscope. Not much color here. We want this up towards the boxes a bit more. So if I go to saturation and just increase this, See how this is sliding up towards the boxes? Now you can't do it too much because you will blow the clip out. So just you know, do it enough so it looks nice. And you got your RGB. This actually looks pretty even. Maybe it could use a little bit more red. You see the reds are a bit down here. So I could go to the, I think maybe midtones and add some red to it. Yeah, you see that? No, you know, and the blacks, the reds too high in the dark. See, this is the dark, so it's higher than everything else. So let's go to the, the shadows and let's bring the reds down a bit on the shadows. Yeah, uh, it's a little bit tough to do it with a mouse. <laughs> that looks kind of cool, actually. Look at that. I like that. So anyway, that's how you do effects. You know, you can go to this clip here. I can go to any of these effects. You know, transform, key, matte. Let's go to transform, transform 3D, click it, drag it down here. And you can do the same thing. You can enable keyframing just by clicking this little hourglass thing to highlight it. I can, you know, bring it over here, bring it up here. I can bring the Z back. I can then move the cursor over here. You can even click and drag it actually. And that's going to affect these automatically if you want to. And now the clip's going to move from one side to the other. 
And the same thing, keyframes, you can just mess with them here the same way you did before. You know, you can go up here and remove the effect if you want. You know, so that's effects. And you just got your audio tab here. So if you go over here to the little flippy triangle, you have the actual audio meter right here. So you can see it playing here. You can take your levels and you can increase you can increase the levels if you want, make them higher. You can add keyframes to the audio and you can just, you know, do whatever with the audio too. So that way this is just all over the place. You can delete the keyframes, just click it and hit delete. And now it's gone. Uh, you can right click, I believe, reset segmented levels. That brings it right back to where it was before. I like this limiter filter here. Let's add that. It's one of my favorite filters. Uh, it's keyframeable. Not that I have a keyframe it. But if I set this to like negative one, then the audio will never go above negative one. So it will never over modulate no matter how much I increase the gain on it. This is really nice. So that way you can increase the gain without worrying about over modulating the audio. Really nice. Yeah, and these all work the same way. You know, you click and drag. You have all these keyframes. You, you can enable keyframe with the audio too. You know, the only filter I ever really use is the limiter filter, but you you know you can do whatever you want with with this as well. And you know, the right the um, the computer's being slow, but this this would delete it if I clicked that, or you can just toggle it off. You know, remove the effect, remove it. You know, whatever. So that's audio for you. Now the only thing left to do really is to export this, and there's a couple ways to do it. You can right click. And down here, export media. I like to do the AVI H265. You know, you have all your settings here. I like to increase the bit rate, make it better. Um, marked selection or whole sequence or ignore leading trailing black. This is what I usually use. So if you do ignore leading a trailing black, all the black at the end or the beginning will not export with it. And that's great. The other way you can do is you can go over here, click I for in and like O for out, right click, export, you know, pick your settings and then do marked selection. That's the other way you can do it. And then you just name it, click where you want it to go and you just hit the start button and it's going to export. And that's really it. I mean, that's everything you need to know to get started with Lightworks in 2024. I have a link in the video description to a private Facebook page. If you'd like to send me a friend invite on that and follow me there, and that would be great. And I'll do some interaction with the fans on there. You can ask me questions or whatever you want. Uh, so yeah, click that link and check out that page. And I will keep these videos coming. Please like the video. Click that like button. It's important. And share it. That's also important. It'll help me out. So thanks for watching, and I will see you next time.